Welcome back to Vision Auto Garage. In the last episode, I cut a hole in the roof of the Rowdy Metro to mount the intercooler. Things weren't going to plan and I hurt my thumb, but you'll be pleased to know it's fully intact. During the week, I've been able to fully install the intercooler, so let's take a look at how I did it. In hindsight, I'm pleased I didn't finish the intercooler mounting in the last episode. It just wasn't a very nice solution. Special thanks go to Stephen Schofield, who commented under the last video that I should use the grab handle mounts in the side of the roof to build a frame and mount the intercooler on that. This car doesn't actually have any grab handles in the rear, but Stephen did give me a very good idea, and that's how I've progressed. The intercooler is mounted on two 20mm thin wall tubes, using 2mm steel tabs welded to the tubes and bolted to the intercooler lugs. The rear tube is welded directly to the body shell. The 1 meter length of tube is a nice fit, so it seemed a convenient solution. The front tube has a bracket welded at either end, with a simple bend to line up with the roof structure. An M8 riv nut was set into the body, and the tube bolted to it. It's a much neater and more sturdy solution than a sheet steel flange from the thin roof. I'll need to make a suitable shroud, or find a large rubber seal to take up the gap between the cooler and the roof. I haven't actually ordered any intercooler pipe work yet, but I do have this spare aluminium 90 degree bend, and it's going to help me get a good idea of how I'm going to route the pipe work. This tube's the wrong diameter, but it does line up very nicely parallel with the roll cage backstay. It's going to allow me to keep the tube work out of my rear view, and crucially, away from any hot engine components. Before I measure up and order all of my aluminium tubes and silicon joiners, I'm going to mount the radiator in the front of the car. That way I can place one order for all of the hoses and joiners and tubes that I need. Before moving on to the radiator, some leftover door seal works nicely as a makeshift seal and gives me an idea of the seal profile I'll need to find. Continuing my theme of reusing parts from old projects, I've got this dual pass alloy radiator that I've pulled from my V6 midget that's currently sitting idle. A dual pass radiator simply means that coolant flows through its core twice instead of once like a cross flow or downflow radiator. Coolant enters the top half of the tank, flows through the top half of the core into the end tank, and then back through the bottom half of the core and out. A dual pass radiator doesn't necessarily improve cooling, but it does increase flow speed and pressure, which has benefits of reducing a small air pockets and localised boiling. The rad seems like it will be a good fit. Removing the bumper bar gives me better access. I may not refit it. I had anticipated fitting the radiator in the grommets for the stock Metro Rad, but it's sitting quite nicely a little further back, and a plan presents itself to mount it using two lengths of angle. Two 12 inch lengths are cut and fettled into a tight fit between the core support and the lower frame. The studs are cut off of the bottom of the radiator. After marking out the hole centres for the bosses on each tank, holes are made and the angle mounted to the rad.
It's a simple and tidy solution and with the addition of some rubber mounts should be durable. The assembly is removed and cleaned back to bare metal with a wire wheel. The supports are tacked in place and then stitch welded on both sides. I suspect the core is slightly small for a 1.8 turbo engine, so I want to increase its efficiency by adding a fan shroud. This will increase the surface area that the fan is drawing air through by sealing it to the core. It will likely reduce the efficiency while the fan is off, which could cause the fan to be on longer, but I won't really know until it's up and running and I can monitor temperatures. The core is measured and a simple box is marked out on some alley sheet. It's cut out using a bench mounted shear and folded in a box pan brake. The shroud is a nice tight fit on the core. Marking a cross on the shroud allows me to centre the fan horizontally and vertically before tracing its circumference.
Drilling a large hole out in the centre helps me get the tin snips in to rough cut the opening. A die grinder is used to open out the hole. I'm not going all the way to my marks as there's a lip on the edge of the fan and I want that to mate flush to the shroud. It's not perfectly round but it will work just as well. Next, the mount holes are marked through the fan brackets. M6 riv nuts are inserted and the fan is mounted. A quick test shows there's really good draw across the entire radiator core. If the shroud wasn't there, there would be very localised flow with little on the edges. Now I just need some tabs to mount the shroud to the radiator.
radiator assembly is now installed and that's another job off the to-do list. I've just ordered a pair of stainless steel cooling pipes that run front to rear under the floor of an MGTF. They'll do exactly the same job here and once I have them fitted I'll be able to work out the lengths for the silicon hoses and joiners I'll need to complete the system. Earlier in the week I ordered a set of these aluminium coolant elbows to replace the brittle plastic ones on the car. The complete set was under £30 and because they're aluminium I'll be able to cut and modify them to suit my installation. I'm really pleased with the day's progress and if you've enjoyed this episode and the series so far please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.